Welcome back, folks. It is I, your illustrious host, Lord Zedek Tigrarius Haruk. And as always, it is wonderful to see you all again, or for the first time, if you're just tuning in. I'd like to welcome you all back to Late Night Bastards Gaming here on a Friday night with Pathfinder Rise of the Rune Lords. Where we find our intrepid adventures currently on the outskirts of Foxglove Manor. Uh, there's... With us today is Mr. Craptastic, Mr. Oblivion, Mr. Douglas, and Mr. CD. Oh, hi Alright, so... What else is the word for Fox Club? There's another word for it. Monkshood? No, Fox Club is deadly poisonous. Uh, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's got another name, I'm sure, it, like, Hemlock? death something. Hmm. Let me look it up. Oh. When I get to a computer, I will. Right. So, before anyone does anything to the house, I would like... Everyone to make a knowledge local check. And I know Douglas, I'm asking you to make a skill check. I'm sorry. Douglas is currently uh, Douglas is currently away from his house and away from his notes. That's okay. Uh even more importantly, I'm away from my roll twenty. Ah. <clears throat> And Vic delivers. Investigator, it's what I do. Mm -hmm. you mean Vic's character does his job? Yay! <laughs> Whereas the, uh, the sorcerer out of cold storage probably wouldn't know jack shit about this place. Ganon. The coroner doesn't know anything either. Yeah, that too. Well, you could have heard something. That would require me to socialize with people. Or read a book. Yep. Well, Vic, you know everything on the Foxglove Manor lore chart. <laughs> so... Foxglove Manor is 80 years old and has been the seat of the Foxglove family the whole time. Some sort of tragedy struck the family a few decades ago and no one's lived there since. Common rumor holds that the place is haunted. The next tier up, Foxglove Manor is known as the Misgivings by some locals, particularly the Parisians. It is certainly a certainly has a bad reputation, sightings of strange lights in the attic, windows, muffled sounds of screaming from above and below, and even rumors of a huge bat-winged devil living in caves below the manor are but a few of the tales told about the place. Foxglove family lived there as recently as two decades ago, but then a fire burned down the servant's building. Cyrilly Foxglove was found dead, burnt, and dashed on the rocks below the cliffs behind the house. And Traver Foxglove was found in his bedroom, dead by his own hand. The children, including young Aldern Foxglove, were sent away to be raised in Corvosa by distant relations. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a wild guess, you know, like... You know that Aldern was well, like was pretty much sent there because he kind of told you in passing at some point while you guys were drunk in the tavern. Sure. Because I don't really think of any books that you'd be reading that would have that information. Let's see here. 
Aldern Foxglove recently returned to live in the manor, but he had a hell of a time hiring locals to aid him in the reconstruction and repair of the old building. Until Aldern moved back in, the place was cared for by a named, man named Rogars Kraisby, who came in three days a week from Sandpoint to air, to air the place out, check for squatters, and make minor repairs. Foxglove Manor was built by Yorel... No, Borel. Damn my eyes, I need glasses. Voral Foxglove, a merchant prince from Magnamar. He and his family lived there for 20 years before the entire family perished from disease. The surviving Foxgloves of Magnamar shunned the place for 40 years until Trevor Foxglove moved back in. And we all know how well that happened. And finally, the Foxgloves have traditionally been associated with the Brothers of the Seven, a secret society based in Magnamar and consisting of merchants or thieves, depending on who you talk to. Members of the society periodically visit Foxglove Manor at night during the years the manor went in, went unlived in, perhaps to check up on the building and make minor repairs, or perhaps for more sinister pursuits. But, you know, these are just uh, rumors and haysay on the last one. Mm-hmm. If you'd like, I could get you a cutout for all that information. Uh, yeah, that would be better. Okay. Oh, hey, man, I used to hear they had cool raves. So how long ago was the, mo the most recent that this place was habitated? Supposedly. Mm. Uh, recently. Uh, Aldern just recently moved back in. Mm. And uh, I put the uh, clipping of it in. Chat. Yeah, I saw it. I pretty much gave you the last one because you were that close. Mm. And also your girlfriend would probably know a few things about that. Interesting subject for pillow talk. Well, I'd be Well, we kill people for a hobby, so <laughs> Hobby, business, you know, lo love your job. Exactly. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, hello, but, Kathy. Yeah, let me get to. My cat is looking at my own. My parents' cat is looking at me like, you're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> She was quite surprised by this fact. Ooh! I get to introduce haunts. This one states, this haunt should be assigned to the most impulsive character. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, then there's the obsessed haunt. Hmm. I wonder which one of you will get that. Vengeful. There we go. Who wants to be burned at the stake? Oh, don't be. Don't be raising your hands all at once. Anyway, uh, you guys are free to explore. Just, uh... Like, let me know where you're going to uh, do checks and stuff, okay? As always. Well, first I'm going to do a perception for anything out of the ordinary. Yes, Kathy, that's a computer screen. You know, I'm like, part of me is just kind of like going for you what is currently out of the ordinary in your definition. 
movement, anything that might raise an alarm in my mind. Okay. Uh, any kind of guards, uh, the general look of the land. Okay, okay. So, the area actually does look well kept, as if uh, someone did, uh, like, pretty much does come out and take care of the yard work, except for the fact that the trees and bushes are all dead and missing leaves. And, let's see here. You notice Just the trees and bushes, or, the, or like the grass and everything is dead too. Nah, the grass is actually green and looks recently cut. It's just that the trees over here and the bushes are dead, as if they either a didn't get enough water or b just something didn't agree with them. But the grass looks like it's doing perfectly fine. Wonderful Brumita. Grows like a weed. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to roll for the same thing, uh, just to see if I see anything unusual, or that Raggy would consider unusual, whilst asking the tree to judge my interpretive dance. Okay. Also, uh, for Vadim, he notices the burnt-out building over here. Yeah. Uh, looking at the house... It, it looks like it has general, like, general bits and pieces missing, sidings, shingles, things like that. A couple windows are broken in, some are boarded up. You, like, uh, hmm. how much homage would uh, Vadim pay to the rumors of hauntings? He's a spiritualist, you tell me. Eh, okay, true. Uh, Vadim feels like he does see some movement in a couple of windows here and there. Uh, you didn't get a good enough look to see if it was a corporeal or incorporeal creature. Hmm. The sound of the waves, oh, like since the area is so close to the sea, you obviously have that scent of uh, ocean, as well as the waves hitting the hitting the side of the cliff. Right. There's just one thing that just seems to be missing in the area. General background noise. Any kind of wildlife, anything like that? Insects, wildlife, pretty much that. You don't hear any birds, no chirping of insects. Who am I going to talk to? Vadim just kind of mutters to himself, it's too quiet. And... He's going to start moving down to take a look at this burnt-out house. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing. Seeing as, seeing as how Vadim is a spiritualist, he takes a look at the main house, and he... Like, I'm going to need you to make me a fortitude save. Okay. What was that? Hold on. I just looked and I forgot the number. You kind of have to double over and wretch because you just feel the most darkest, evilest aura in the entirety of the house. You feel so much death, so many lost souls, so many hauntings, all in this one place. Well, it uh, kind of staggers a little bit. <sighs> you can roll me a knowledge arcana. That is... The same as that. Given your background as a spiritualist, you would have dealt with something like this before. You would have read about it, and you would have actually had 
at least at least one instance where this exact possession. No, no, not possession. Where this exact same feeling came over you the last time you held a phylactery. Oh god. Only this feeling is in the very ground you walk on. It's in the house. It's in the grass. It's in everything. This place is cursed. Fine. Who's that? No wonder I can't see any dragons. Yeah. The Dean takes a minute to steal himself. This is... It's gonna be a long day. Mm. Well, look on the bright side. It's a sunny day. Just watch your step, everyone, and keep your eyes open. What's going on? I just... This... This place is cursed. Oh. Death, destruction, evil. It walks here. That's not good. And you're pretty damn sure that there was at least one instance of someone trying to become a lich in the area. Yeah. But you can't tell if they succeeded or not. More than likely the last, like, if you get this feeling, they either partially succeeded or they didn't. Because if they had succeeded and the entire house became a phylactery, you would be turning tail. Just like, nope, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. And there's the possibility of necromantic influence. Oh, that's not good. Someone tried to lich themselves. I don't know if they managed, but it's pretty extensive. What happens if someone tries to become a lich and fails? They die. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I, I figured that's what it was. I couldn't remember offhand. Yeah, it's pretty much they lose their soul to the I was trying to think of the name of the uh, the Undead Masters, was it? Anyone here play Skyrim recently? Um, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Fuck. Yeah, the, uh, um, yeah. The Masters. Yeah. The Masters. Up. Those guys. Fuck. The Necromantic Master yeah. people, blah, blah, blah. Basically, king of worms. Mm, no, not the king of worms. Not the the pers the people that the king of worms uh, bowed to. Yeah. Basically, the people that give necromancers their powers and allow liches to lich would have kicked crap out of the call. Damn it, unseen masters! Why? Okay, while we wait for Crap to reboot his computer, more than likely. Uh, I take it you're... Oh. Nope. He, he's still here. The Ideal Masters. Yeah, Ideal Masters. There they are.
I had to dive into a very old folder. To right. Welcome back, crap. I just kept more. <sighs> that was unusual. Yeah. So I take it Vadim is going to walk up to the uh, burnt out building. Yeah, so I'm going to take a look in there first. All right. Um, a little bit of uh, flavor text. Uh, it's impossible to tell how many floors the outbuilding that stood here once had, for all the remains are the crumbling stones of its foundation. The stones still bear scorches and cracks from the fire that destroyed the building long ago. To the east, a four-foot-wide stone well sits, partially collapsed in the corner of the ruins. Mm -hmm. Um, any way to tell if it burnt through magical means or hmm give me one quick second as I as I ascertain hmm no, no, it, from what you can tell, it looks like it just got struck by lightning one day. Hmm. You know, the uh, Frankenstein lightning that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, does anyone examine the well? I'll examine it. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. All right. Uh, CD, since you're currently, well, CD and Gannon, since you're currently examining it, give me uh, perception checks. What's my perception at? And for Vadim, you're, you're looking around. Everything pretty much just seems to be rather, no, I'm not rather normal, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Except for one thing. I was waiting for that. <laughs> you you notice a you notice some ravens in the trees. Okay. Staring at you. Hmm. You you do like a quick head count and you count about. Yeah, you count about a good dozen murders. Vadim stares back. I just had a really horrible, awful idea. Mm. A really horrible, awful idea. Vic, mm -hmm. roll me a will save. No. <laughs> Your will overpowers that of the ravens. Okay. They seem to fear you, leave you alone. Except for one. That comes up. Lands on your shoulder. The little imp gets uh, knocked off, goes onto your other shoulder, and kind of has a shouting match with it. Both of you shut up. <laughs> and then... He turns... Go on. Okay. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to guess. You said you were going to say Vadim turns to the raven. Yeah, it just turns his head to look at this bird out of the corner of his eye. It's holding something within its blackened beak. Cautiously reaches for it. It gives it to you. In a, in a manner of respect. Alright, what is it? It is a... Onyx Gem. 
perfectly per perfectly spherical. When I said that, Drake and Josh popped into my head. Mm, detect magic on it. You go. Huh. You got yourself a bona fide magical item there, right there in your hand. Yes, I will say that. Alright, then I guess I'll have to do a spellcraft. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're doing that, Ganon. Mm. You notice about, uh, like, it's a hundred foot well, fi uh, uh, drops a hundred feet into a fifty foot deep pool of rainwater, mm -hmm. uh, just above the level of water. You notice something underneath growth. Like a whole bunch of vines and shit and here and there. You do notice a passageway. Hmm. I throw Zachariah in, say, find out where that leads. The fuck? <laughs> uh, 29? Yes, yeah, 29 on the spell, Chris. All right. Yeah, if you say a bona fide ion stone there, yes, you do. A what? A bona fide ion stone. You place it, and it hovers around your head. Okay. This one seems to give you an ability to summon raven swarms. Well, then. Hmm. Yes, I was recently playing uh, Dishonored. Right. And also Bioshock Infinite. They all, oh. they gave me the, they, they kind of, like, I thought about that, looking at the Ravens, looking at you, and it's kind of a staring contest, and I'm like, <sighs> Okay, let's do this. So what you... happens when you get in a steering contest with a magic user? Indeed. So basically, you now can summon a raven storm like, uh, like, ha! Yay, raven go! If you hello? want, hello. Hello, yes? This is working. Mommy? Yep, it's working. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, Vadim here does notice there is something else he can do with this. Go on. Instead of it hovering around him, he could permanently slot it into a limb. Hmm. Like, say, you push it into your hand type thing. Right. Or you can go the old uh, Tenchi Muyo route and put it in your wrist. Hmm. I swear, if anyone in the audience gets that reference. He is I not got it. Real, <laughs> no, I think... um. Well, the hand would be too... Well, it would be under a glove, but... Very easy to lose your hands. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry! I didn't mean to be that horrible. We'll go... Inside of the forearm. About halfway between the wrist and the, uh... Elbow on his left arm. Okay. And as... Or he can keep it hidden under his sleeve. Yeah. So, you roll up your sleeve, and you press it into your arm. You feel a really, really strong burning sensation. 
as the magical item becomes your arm. And you now have raven-like tattoos on your arm. Mm -hmm. Looks bitchin'. Now, my new question is, do you act do you actually throw Zachariah down the well? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was serious. Knowing you crap, I have to ask. Uh so yeah, do you uh point it out and say it out loud? Oh yep. and Vadim. Mm -hmm. All the ravens are gone. Huh. I mean or were they ever really there? Why a Napa? <laughs> I, I, I've been kind of obsessed with DBZ lately. I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> if we want to go a little bit more epic, everyone sees all the ravens in the area fly up into the air, become a black cloud of doom, and as Vadim puts the gem into his arm, they fly into the gem and cause even more burning pain sensations as, the, <clears throat> as they form the tattoos. <clears throat> huh. Okay. Aren't you happy you did? You decide not to put it in your forehead. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm. You have those soul stone there. Because I'd be pretty much, I'd pretty much have to say at that point, if you put it in your head, that you got a that uh your brother currently has a few ravens in his room. Hmm. And all you hear, well, not it states here they're silent ravens, so. You'd be pretty much good. You wouldn't be constantly hearing Gah! Gah! All right. And Ganon points out a passageway down the well about 50 feet down. Anybody feel like going for a swim? Eh, why not? Well, it's, it's right above the waterline. If you have a rope, you can just rope it. <clears throat> Am I going to need to make these dice rolls in the next 15 minutes? Mm, not specifically. Okay, cool. Your strength, your strength score is high enough to where I'm pretty sure if you decide to climb down a rope, you'd be fine. Uh, climb, fly, who cares? Well, I got 50 feet of rope. Let me use my cloud. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, I've got, the, I've got the imaginary, I've got the imaginary flying dog. All right, so who's going down the well? I, I guess I am. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Oh, Greg, you can go with him. That's fine. Well, I mean, you all can go down there if you want. We're going to pull Scooby-Doo and just split up. Is there sufficient room down there? Hey, Vic, could you please teach CD the first rule of any RPG game? Don't don't yeah, if he wants to die, let him die. <laughs> don't, the don't split up the party rule. There you go. It's just too perfect. We got Raggy and Ruby. Come on. I'm not here to teach the noobs. <laughs> It was just too good a joke to pass up. I watched Zombie Island yesterday. Great. I feel sorry for you. Well, no, actually, the game was kind of good. The movie Zombie Island. The Scooby-Doo movie Zombie Island. Oh. Oh. Okay. So the Reggie and Ruby just hit home. Yeah. Today. All right. So. Got that. So. Whoever goes down the well, move your tokens to B thirty two. 
Because you please with my token to see if I can do it. Sure. And just for just so that way everyone knows, that is all the way down here. I will say, doing this, you guys are skipping quite a lot of the house, but... No, if we should do the house first, let's do the house first. Oh no, they, they give you this option. They give you this option. I have a feeling we're going to come up in the middle of the house anyway. <laughs> so, Ganon, do you just want to okay. stand outside all alone? Yeah. Make sure the rope is tied nice and tight and going down. <laughs> Repelling down. Imagine. Ganon ends Unfortunately, up Ganon that. was oh. not a Boy Scout. Splash. <laughs> no, I'm better than a Boy Scout. A trained ranger. All right, so P32. One second while I scroll. <laughs> Three, hey, yeah. Get more. Here we go. This long cave stinks of rotten meat. The source of the horrific smell is readily apparent in the swath of caucuses strewn about the floor of this place. Most seem to be small animals and fish, but at least three humanoid bodies and one partially eaten horse lie in the mess as well. Uh, anyone know Detect Undead? Nope. Yeah, we usually detect things if I bump it into them. Well, you could do that, Raggy. Fuck. So my Zippo decided to give out a little bit more power than I'm used to it given out, and I just burned part of my eyebrow off. Yeah. Now. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. The cavern is um You guys do notice one creature in here in this room in particular. Just one itsy bitsy tiny itty bitty creature. Here we go. I completely forgot you existed. So. Here we go. There you are. So yeah, you guys, like, it's dark in here, but most of you already have dark vision. Mm hmm So, just looking around, looking at the corpses, trying not to smell... You know, try not to use your nose at all. But it's not that horrible to where I would ask you for a fortitude save, so don't worry. That's a good thing I've all the nerves in my nose out long ago, is it? 
Indeed, indeed. Alright then. Perfect size. But, a couple of you look up, and you notice a big, giant, ghoulish looking bat. Do shit. Oh, wait a second, I don't have dark vision. I don't notice shit. Sucks for you. <laughs> but we all snigger as you fall over a rock. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite dark. You are likely to be eaten by a grill. <laughs> ah, crap. Did I give you dark vision besides the goggles? Uh, no. Ah. I feel like I gave you dark vision because of your demonic form. I don't remember mention of any dark vision being given to me, so... Well, you have a demon form now, so you have dark vision. Woohoo. So if Is you... any bloodline any dark vision? He's coming, he does. Uh, you'd have to look that up. But I I'm think looking. I think that would be a power. If not, then if then if you ask crap nicely, he may give you the dark vision goggles. Nope. I don't have dark vision. So uh, does anyone have anything that would give me dark vision? Well that's why I Please? said if you ask crap nicely. I don't think I know character. that Zachariah knows that crap has. Oh, this. oh, he said that in character. Sorry. Anyone got I don't think anyone knows that spell. There's not something I'd worry about. Knows what spell? There's an actual spell that grants you dark vision. Oh, I could cast light. I can, we can all cast light. And, but and we yeah, won't. Doesn't I mean, necessarily mean it's a good idea to use them all the time. I mean, he. Okay, so he, so Zachariah asks asks around. Hey, do you guys have anything that grants dark vision? I can't see shit. Uh, <clears throat> takes his goggles off. Here. Thank you, crap. I'll return these once we're out of here. I put the goggles on. Who's crap? I look around. Oh. That's so, hideous. So yeah, Zachariah can see. He saw the sign, and the sign was Big Giant Bat. So, uh... <laughs> what do you want to bet that Dancing Light would really fuck that thing up? Uh... Not at all. But it's a bat. The light. Actually, I wouldn't know that. Zachary probably wouldn't know that. Well, that's your knowledge, nature, or re well, religion now, too. Because uh, it's technically undead. Both of those are just straight D20s. Religion. Actually, hold on. Let me check what my yeah religion. <laughs> I know checks are shit. You 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 spent way too much time in the deep freeze. So, uh, Vadim, mm -hmm. you can tell right off the bat this thing's a ghoul. It has been ghoulified. So. You're, you could tell that you were going to run into ghouls in here. Yeah, I had a feeling. You... And it pretty much has all the original ghoul traits. Command ghouls, create spawn. Uh, let's see here. Bat-wise, you probably don't know too much about bats. But you're pretty sure that its attacks now cause paralysis. Great. Ow. Fuck. So, yeah, if, um... 
anyone wishes to roll initiative to fight this thing, they may do so now. As long as run away. Run where? Oh, upstairs. Oh, yeah. You guys can take it. To be fair, we can take quite a lot of stuff, as long as it doesn't chew through all our bodies before we kill it. Indeed, indeed. So, Zachariah, you get to act first in the initiative order. Okay. One moment. Let me look up Scorching Ray. the range on that uh how close is it eh 30 feet up that's within range also i just want to state this this thing actually has a wisdom score huh. its wisdom is 18 oh that's wiser well, than i, I am to be fair your average dog is wiser than this party so, uh, I don't really need to roll uh, anything. Well, <laughs> speak for yourself. Uh, Green Scar's got a wisdom of 20. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm still in the party with Raggy. <laughs> That's why I have the twin card and can talk to myself. <laughs> I believe it needs to roll a reflex save in order to do half damage. Let me double check that. Is there a save? There is no saving throw. He's right. just hit by a full d6. Well, or is that a touch? It doesn't say. Range touch attack, never mind. Yeah, I was about ready to say, you kind of do have to do one thing. Let's see, your standard action, uh, vocal, and the somatic. Yep, you're within range. One or more rays. You blast your enemies with a searing beam of fire. You may fire one ray plus one additional ray for every four levels beyond third. You're currently level five. Yep. Okay, so at level so seven, you could fire you fire two. Nice. Mm -hmm. Range touch attack deals 46 yep. points of fire damage. So rolling to hit. Okay. Does that hit his touch? Touch AC, touch AC. No. Damn it. Hit the rock behind it as it dodges. And, okay. just, and just because, you notice the uh, symbol for Piccolo on the back. Mm -hmm. Huh. 